Hey everybody! Sorry we're running a little late. Sometimes you just can't go live. It just says that sometimes and we're here now and hopefully you're here now. So welcome to episode 32, 32 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and this is where I answer your questions about healthy, permanent and sustainable weight loss. And the best way to submit a question is at www.eatunprocessed.com. And why not sign up to be on my mailing list when you're there? We send out really interesting videos every week. So before we get started with the questions, Kenny always asks me to tell everybody where I'm going to be. Well, today I'm here in my home, but soon I might be... Beautiful Sherman Oaks, nice and warm, <laughs> almost 90 degrees. Absolutely. We've got Eden here. We've got our whole team here. Bailey, we're doing this in front of a live studio audience. So where I'm going to be next is, let's see, what month is this? This is June, June. right? So month of love. I'm going to be at the Orange County Meetup on Saturday, September 17th. Dr. Steve Luenda speaking. So September. if you're did I say September? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> June 17th. This a week from this Saturday. That's okay. where I'm going to be. Oh, I'll be this weekend is Las Vegas. So I will be with John Pierre at the Health, Healing, and Happiness Seminar. There's still tickets left. You can use my name, Chef AJ, for a $50 discount. Hope to see you at the Tuscany. And I hope you come back at the Tuscany in September when we do the live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference. It'll be at the same hotel. It's a great hotel right off of the Strip. June 24th to July 1st, Rancho La Puerta. I'm teaching three hands-on cooking Mexico. classes with recipes you don't get if you take my class in in my home or other places. So it's really fun, and I'll hopefully be giving some lectures too. Ah, July 8th and 9th at the Oak Spa in Ojai. You're going away for my birthday? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were the, June 20th. July, July 20th. 21st. July 20th, birthday. Let's see, what else is going on in July? July 10th, 17th. Ah, the PCRM event on the last weekend of July. I'm on a panel about weight loss. Mm -hmm. Where is that in? What city is that? That is in Washington, D.C. So you can go to PCRM.org for more information. Oh, I was just added to the uh, Spokane. I was told it's not Spokane. Do not say Spokane. You so Spokane? I, the Spokane, Spokane Washington Veg Fest on July 22nd. I'll be giving my favorite lecture, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And that's it for uh, the next couple of months. So what have you guys got for me today? Anna asked, if we aren't getting regular sunlight exposure, mm -hmm. what do you recommend we do about vitamin D? Move to California and get regular <laughs> sunlight exposure. So, Anna, what you need to do is understand that vitamin D is actually a hormone and you do get it from the sun, but different people produce different amounts even if they do get regular sun exposure. So what I recommend everybody do before they supplement with anything is to go to their doctor and get a blood test. And there's a simple blood test for vitamin D, just as there's one for B12 and there's even one for omega-3 fatty acid levels. So get it checked, and if it's low, you can decide whether or not you want to supplement. You know, Dr. McDougal is not for supplementation, but many of the other plant-based doctors are, so I'm not going to make that decision for you whether or not you need to supplement with vitamin D. B12, I would say you definitely do. But that's what you can do because you can't really get it from food, at least not enough, or from tanning beds. The best thing to do is get out in the sun. You want to have your, your face and your arms exposed, which a lot of people cover up, unfortunately. So that's what you do. And believe it or not, some people produce normal amounts, even in climates that are dark. So that's why it's good to get it tested once a year. That's what I do. And I've been looking. Oops, that's okay. Uh, we're watching it as we're filming this. I, I, I'm out in the sun two hours a day walking Bailey, so mine is good. But definitely get it checked, and then you can decide what to do. And, you know, all the True North doctors will do Skype consults, and Dr. Goldhammer does a free consult if you have more questions. So thank you. Oh, one other thing. not If you are an ethical vegan, not all vitamin D is, is vegan. So there's the D3, which... I believe is vegan and the D2 that I sorry I don't have the number I have the numbers mixed up but one of the vitamin D's is made from lanolin which is from sheep's wool that is not vegan but you can get vegan vitamin D if you do decide to supplement you can get it in drops and you can get it in pills and thank you yeah we got a good question here Tony is eating a healthy plant-based diet but not losing weight. Ah. Why? This is the whole question we answer well, over. Right, right. So, density. Tony, join Ultimate Weight Loss so that you can be posting your food on the logs and then I can look at your three-day food log. So, what? just because it's plant-based doesn't mean you're going to lose weight eating it because the most fattening foods on the planet, the foods with the highest caloric density, are all plants. 
nuts, seeds, and oil. These are the foods with the highest amount of calories. So I don't know what the percentage of fat is in your diet. I don't know if you're overeating. So please consider joining Ultimate Weight Loss so I can work more closely with you because I really do need to see a three-day food diary. And you can also go to your doctor as sometimes people are hypothyroid, but even so, that doesn't mean you can't lose weight. It generally just means you'll lose weight more slowly. I was hypothyroid and I did not choose to medicate until after I lost all my weight. So maybe consider getting that done as well. But please join UWL so I can look at your food and tell you what you may be missing or doing wrong. So Marlene's asking, mm -hmm. does plantains permitted as starch vegetables? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a fruit, but it's a starchy fruit. So they're higher in caloric density than fruit. I, I think they're, if fruit's about 200 calories a pound to 300, I think starchy, we answered this one week before, I believe it's 400 calories a pound, but sure it's permitted. Really any whole, whole food plant is permitted, but realize that there are some that are of extremely high caloric density, like nuts and seeds, and then avocados, of course, are, are much higher. So sure, it's a starch. It's botanically a fruit. It's a lot of crossover, like because eggplant, zucchini, tomato, okra, bell pepper, and cucumber, we think of them as non-starchy vegetables. They have a caloric density of about 67 calories per pound, but they're actually fruits. But So plantains are a starch, but they're a starchy fruit, and it's a kind of a unique thing. And they're very good. You can A lot of people are putting them in the air fryer, and they're, they're delicious. So Liberty is wondering how caffeine inhibits weight loss if it does, whether or not it does. Right, right. Well, you know, I don't remember which episode we talked about this at length, so I, I don't want to say have to watch all of them. I, I wish I had an idemic memory like Dr. McDougall, where he could tell you the exact date of the newsletter to answer the question. It doesn't inhibit weight loss directly, but it does so indirectly. And one of the ways is, is a lot of times people aren't drinking black coffee. They're putting cow pus, AKA dairy, or lots of sugar in it. So those things are not favorable for weight loss. But what it is, is caffeine is a drug. It's not a food. It has a 17 hour half-life. So even that one cup of coffee you have in the morning can affect your sleep later on, which that can actually affect your ability to lose weight if you're not getting deep enough REM sleep and regular sleep. Uh, you know, it's a stimulant. so you know it's it, indirectly it can it's not it's not the worst thing if you're drinking one cup of coffee a day black but it can raise your exogenous cholesterol and it can definitely raise your heart rate so people with cardiac problems or I things that were exogenous cholesterol. Exa that means instead Whoa. of endogenous you know it, you know so uh, again it's like if somebody comes to me for help with food addiction or weight loss it's not the first thing we tackle unless they're putting sugar and dairy in it so you know uh, there is some uh, stump studies, and you'd, you'd have to look online for these. I know that Dr. Um, Linda Carney talks about this, how that uh, what happens is coffee can raise your estrogen, just like alcohol, and you know that's that's something that is linked to cancer when women have high levels of estrogen as they as they age. So you know it's not good. So it's it's an addiction. It, that's why the longest line at the airport is always Starbucks. It's never Jamba Juice. Going back to Tony with the plant-based diet he talked about, he says, well, he eats starch and flour. Yeah, well, fl okay? no, not flour, absolutely. Flour has a very high caloric density. It's not a whole food. The fiber's been removed or disruptive, and it, w once, you, once you powder your foods, they become more like drugs than food. So flour, like sugar, goes through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol. Whole grains are 500 calories a pound. Flour is triple the caloric density of 1,500 calories a pound. So it is by no means a weight loss food for anyone. That's actually a weight gain food. So maybe if you cut the flour out and just eat your whole food whole, you will lose weight. And I just realized you're gonna ask me the question about my Batman shoes. Yep. Kenny, can you talk for a minute so I can go get them? Your Batman shoes? Or you won't be able to find them in my closet. Maybe I can show, somebody wanted to know. Batman shoes? <sighs> can, you want me to go say something? What yeah, you can you just, just, so just, ask a question just, just, just talk see. for a minute. I, I just get Hello everybody, I'm on live on the air. So How long have you been vegan, Kenny? I've been vegan now for seven years. Woo! Yes. <laughs> And I want to talk about a point question here. Jenny wants to know the order that I eat food in. Well, that's something that AJ will answer because I just eat what's available. <laughs> See, we're showing you that Kenny is a real person and he's single. Hey, you want to pin this on me so I can keep oh. talking? Because to read the question, Eden, because and then because this actually leads into something Valerie I want to says, talk about. Hi, Chef AJ. Please show us your Batman high top sneakers that so motivated your healthy goals along. Right. So, so the reason I I interrupted this broadcast to go show you these is this is what we call an ultimate weight loss, an NSV, or a non-scale victory. 
Because as you're losing weight, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose, it, it can be discouraging because like you're, yeah, right? they are, they are converses because oh, yeah, yeah. you're not seeing results immediately. Yeah. And so the ultimate weight loss program is for permanent, slow and sustainable weight loss. If you want fast weight loss, go ahead and take pills, drugs, gastric bypass, do a weighing and measuring program. That's not what this is. UWL is the ultimate way of life. It's the ultimate warranty for life. And we lose weight slowly. That's how we're able to keep it off. So in 1987, I think that's quite a long time ago. When my dog Lucky died, my first dog is an adult that I had by myself. I was very depressed, and so my friend offered to take me to Maui. My best friend Elaine. I, go. I don't know if she ever watches, but hello. I am. Anyway, oh, like best friend since September 1st, 1971. And I had a really bad Diet Coke habit. I was drinking just all day Diet Coke. And we know now that Diet Soda is much worse for you than regular soda. I actually had somebody contact me for a consult that used to work for Coca-Cola. And they said they knew back then that aspartame was toxic, that it was linked to Alzheimer's and all kinds of things. And it's, it's horrible. So it, it's even worse. If you're drinking soda, that's bad. If you're drinking soda with sugar, if you're drinking diet soda, it's so bad because you've got three toxic addictive chemicals in there. You got the caffeine, you, well that's there's two. You got the caffeine and you got the aspartame. So as much as I hate sugar and I do, I'd rather see people drink regular soda than diet soda. I'd rather have you drink water or pot liquor or hibiscus tea. So anyway, I had this really bad habit of drinking like copious amounts of Diet Coke first thing in the morning. I switched from coffee because I actually had a gastric ulcer from drinking coffee and the Coke felt better to me. And she said that if I could go a week without Diet Coke, she would give me these shoes. Now, you can't buy these shoes in the store because she worked at, I believe it's Warner Brothers, or whoever produced that movie. And these were like a prototype. These weren't sold. There's, there were very few made. So these are collector's items. I, I've actually really never worn them. And I, being a vegan, always loved non-leather shoes, especially really cool ones. And so I made, went the whole week and I sat on the beach in Maui and detox and had horrible headaches and cried a lot, but I got the shoes and never drank another Diet Coke since. So nice. that's my non-scale victory. And we encourage you guys to have non-scale victories. And the great non-scale victory is letting yourself come to the conference, the Ultimate Weight Loss Live conference on September 1st at the Tuscany Hotel with Dr. Doug Lyle, Dr. Ellen Goldhammer, Dr. Carrie Saunders, myself and John Pierre. And you know, buy it on PayPal. Take six months, pay it off, no interest. Same thing with the, our program. That's how you make things more affordable. So Kathy wrote and said, I'm experiencing those who see the heavy me and discount the fact that I am new to the whole food plant-based transition. I had lost 19 pounds and then heard Dr. McDougall diss quote unquote fat vegans in a webinar and, that, and threw myself right back into a half gallon of ice cream, <laughs> rethinking the whole transition thing. I finally decided to screw that noise and get back on track and just not listen to his webinars anymore. Okay. Why can't gurus understand that words matter to us sensitive types? Okay, well, there's so much in this question, different layers that I want to address. So first of all, if Dr. McDougal or anyone hurts your feelings, you have every right to tell them how you feel. And Dr. McDougal is one of the few doctors that puts his email out on his website, his personal email, Dr. McDougal at drmcdougal.com, and he actually answers people usually within seconds of you sending the email. His answers are short because he gets a lot of them, but if he really did hurt your feelings, tell him. I mean, I would tell him on your behalf, but I, I just, that would not, you know, I, it would be better if you could tell him how you feel, and maybe he'll respond, and maybe he won't, maybe you'll like his answer, maybe he won't, but at least you'll feel good for saying that. I know him, and he's a tough cookie he's he's i love him he he's one of the three most influential people in my life along with dr goldhammer dr lyle who've gotten me where i am today i consider him a friend i consider him a hero but he tells it like it is and i'm not saying he's right or wrong or politically correct that's who he is and if you don't want to watch his stuff that's okay but there's so much good stuff in his stuff that i don't want you to throw out the baby with the bathwater. But well, you can't. People need that. Yeah. And he used to be overweight himself. By right. The way. Right. So. You, you know, the other thing I want you to understand is, yes, it. it he wasn't talking to you personally, and, and I know it feels very personal. You know, we have a program called the Ultimate Weight Loss Mastery Program, which is a very small elite group of people that we're working with in, in, in a small group. And we have book clubs. And the first book we did was a book called The Four Agreements. It was written by 
Don Miguel Ruiz, Oprah considers it her favorite book of all time. And there are these four agreements that if we live our life by, we should have a pretty good life. And one of them is don't take anything personally. And I know that if he uses the word fat in the context of a lecture, but believe his lecture is the fat vegan, it can feel very personal. But it's not personal. And unless you, it won't hurt you unless you claim it. So, you know, there's an old, it's not a joke, it's a story that the late great Dr. Reverend O.C. Smith used to tell a church that I, I'm Jewish, but I used to go to a non-denominational uh, uh, church that was like just New Thought Church that Louise Hay uh, talked about in her book, You Can Heal Your Life, which is the book we're doing now in the book club, which is a great book, by the way. And he tells the story of a, uh, of a lady, a very overweight lady driving down a two-lane country road. And she's driving down the road, and the man coming the other way rolls the window down, <coughs> and he shouts out, pig! And then she goes, asshole! And then she runs over a pig. And so, you know, it, it's how you feel about yourself that's, that matters most. And I'm not condoning anybody calling anybody fat or fat shaming. And I understand the situation, how difficult it is if you are, because congratulations on losing 19 pounds. Don't let anybody derail you, you know? It doesn't matter what people say about you, what you think about you, because the truth is, is all that really matters at the end of the day is what you think about you. And please go to Dr. Lyle's website, esteemdynamics.org. He does a wonderful, uh, not is it a podcast or a radio show called Beating Your Genes? And that's all he talks about is esteem and self-esteem and how you have something inside you called the internal audience. And that's the only person that matters. That's the only people you have to impress. It doesn't matter what Dr. McDougall or what I think or what anybody thinks. The other thing you said is, so why can't gurus? I, you know, I, I can't even address that. I don't know. Because gurus are human, like other people. We're, I'm not that I'm a guru, but, but people are people. We say things sometimes that we don't mean, and we put our foot in our mouths, and, you know, you know, there's whole kinds of stand-up comedy that I don't care for, like people like Joan Rivers or Howard Stern. I'm not a comedian. It's based on, uh, on uh, making people feel bad, and so I don't like that. But I will say that when people suffer from food addiction and are overweight, they generally are what's known as an HSP, a highly sensitive person. It's work that was done by Dr. Elaine Aaron, and she has a website, and she has a book and a video by the same name. And so we, and I put myself in there because I was overweight or obese for more than 50 years, and I still believe I am a food addict, albeit in recovery, we are very, very sensitive. And so a lot of times, I'm not saying that he didn't say this, that it didn't hurt your feelings, but a lot of times we tend to take things more personally than they are intended because we're so highly sensitive. So I would encourage you to either get her book or watch some of her videos on YouTube so you can understand a little bit more that you are this highly sensitive person. And therefore, because we are so sensitive, we tend to medicate with things like flour and sugar and alcohol because we feel the pain of the world so deeply and that's why we make such wonderful ethical vegans and that's often why many of us become ethical vegans. But the other thing I wanted to address in your question, and it's funny because um, we're editing my book now, and I was working with the editor and what you said struck a chord, and I'll read you an excerpt from my book, actually, from page 50, because, it's a sneak preview right here, one of the things I find that happens with people in ultimate weight loss or just people I know that are overweight losing weight is if you're using the diet style that I recommend in the ultimate weight loss program, which is the same diet style that has been taught at True North for over 30 years and the same diet style that Dr. McDougall recommends in his maximum weight loss book, you're eating in accordance with the principles of calorie density which means that you're eating large volumes of calorie dilute food, which is awesome because you can actually eat twice as much food by weight and take in half as many calories when you understand calorie density. And so now as a thin person, I can eat like a pig in other people's words because I have to eat huge volumes since I'm not eating any added fat or any processed food or animal products. And so people will say to me when I go to these spas or just any event, they'll go, you're gonna eat all that? and. You know, I can handle it because of who I am, and I'll say something like, yeah, isn't it great? Or, yeah, I'm going to get another plate. But if you're somebody that is still perceived as being overweight, and you eat like I do in a public setting, very often this is what happens. So let me, look guys, I got glasses. I had to finally succumb. It kills me. I'm an old person now. So I wrote in my book, when you truly understand 
the calorie density is the secret to ultimate weight loss. And implemented on a daily basis, you too can actually eat much more food and weigh much less. Eating large quantities of food in public may be difficult for those who are still overweight because they may feel like others who do not understand caloric density are scrutinizing them. Even though a huge plate of rice, beans, and vegetables can have half as many calories as a single slice of pepperoni pizza, it is a much larger volume of food. And so to the nutritionally uneducated, it can look like you're overeating and you may feel like you're being judged. One of my clients was eating a huge plate of steamed vegetables and a plain baked potato at a business lunch, which maybe had a total of 300 calories. And a rude coworker actually said to her, see, this is why you're overweight. You just eat too much. This can be especially difficult for females who were raised to believe that it's not ladylike to eat large portions. So what I recommend people do while they're losing weight, if they're not comfortable or able to to explain calorie density to every person is don't put yourself in those situations. Eat before you go, because if you really understand calorie density, you're gonna eat a lot of food to be able to lose weight, food of low calorie density. And it is hard because people do not have a clue about nutrition, do not have a clue. So um, thank you for your question, and I hope you'll consider contacting Dr. McDougall and tell him you heard his feelings. I mean, either he'll apologize or say he doesn't care or not, not uh, get back to you, but. Why not try? You know, because this would be good for you to, to say how you feel. Thanks. Jenny wants to know the order you eat your food in. Mm, yes, and this uh, plays off on what I was just talking about. I eat my food, Jenny, and I apologize because she asked this two weeks ago on the live feed, and then I wrote it down. I forgot to ask it last week. So I eat my food in order of increasing caloric density. So this is a concept known as sequencing the meals. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make regardless of what diet style they follow to lose weight, is that after they lose weight, they go back to eating what made them fat and sick in the first place. And the reality is, is once you lose weight, you actually have to tighten the screws and be stricter than when you were heavy because you don't get as many calories. So when I weighed 200, I got to eat a lot more calories. It drives me crazy because Kenny goes like this, and I'm thinking like, what does that mean? What does that mean, Kenny? You gotta, you know. I don't know. He's, reading, trying to understand he's going like this. Anyway, so, so when I weighed 200 pounds, I got to eat a lot more food in terms of my caloric daily uh, intake and, and maintain that weight than I can at 117. I mean, now I exercise and I probably can eat more when I wasn't exercising. But the point is, is sequencing the meals is something that's taught to people, at least at True North, where, this is where I learned it, that are maybe having trouble losing weight but it's a great tool and I implement it every day because I actually enjoy my food more. And so by sequencing your meals, what that means is you're eating the foods of the lowest caloric density first before you eat the good stuff. And for me, the good stuff is the starch, the complex unrefined carbohydrate, the squashes, meaning the winter squashes, the potatoes, the rice and the beans. And that's why in Ultimate Weight Loss, we have you eat your vegetables first and for breakfast. If you look at Dr. Barbara Roll's research, she is the woman at Penn State University, the doctor who I've interviewed, who has done the most research in the field of calorie density than anyone else. It's known as Volumetrics, her series of best-selling books, which has always voted one of the safest, sanest, and most sustainable diet styles out there. She talks about how when you start a meal with a salad, with some fruit, or with soup, and soup meaning like a vegetable soup, not like a clam chowder or a cream soup, that, that you automatically eat less in meals. These are things she learned in her laboratory at Penn State University where she studied human eating behavior. And the reason is, is because these calorie dilute foods are mostly water. They're water and fiber and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants and micronutrients. But when you have water with fiber together in the food, you create what's known as bulk, which creates satiety. So you get fuller sooner on fewer calories. Now, I don't always have soup. I mean, if, when I'm at True North, they serve soup and I'll eat soup, but I don't make soup every day. Soup is a really great one because hot soup especially, you can't eat it quickly. So I use vegetables because vegetables are the food that's lowest in caloric density. They range from about 67 calories per pound to about 125 calories per pound. And you simply can't overeat on them. And so any diet style that says you can't eat all the non-starchy vegetables you want, I, I don't know what where they're getting their numbers or where they did their math because you can't overeat on non-starchy vegetables. It's impossible. I eat four pounds of non-starchy vegetables as every day. As long as they're not fried. 
Well, absolutely, you know, absolutely, fries. yes, of Cheap course, of mm-hmm. course, yes. You could overeat on French fries and you could overeat on, on fried zucchini, what, fritters and things like that. But it drives me crazy, these dietary programs that make people weigh and measure seven ounces of vegetables. They, they're eating less vegetables in a day than I'm eating in one serving. I got a question. Yeah. Can you overeat with the, with the air fryer? Well, here's the thing. So. Okay, but all right, I'm going to answer that, but you've got to make sure I go back to what I was saying because I can't always remember when, when, I, when I get okay. stopped. You can overeat on anything, guys. You absolutely can. But you have to understand, what is the impact of overeating? Please watch some of the uh, YouTubes I've done with Dr. Doug Lyle because if you, if you overeat and if you're overeating on whole natural food, so what? It gets stored in your glycogen. You just automatically will eat less the next day. Now, if you're overeating on whole natural food, it's way different than overeating on processed food and animal products, things like flour and sugar. That's a whole different ball game. But if you eat too many vegetables or too much fruit or too much starch one day, what happens is that these excess calories escape through the top of the head, through the fidget factor, or they get stored invisibly in the muscles or in the liver as glycogen. They don't get turned to fat. That's de novo lipogenesis. Now, if you're eating fat, then maybe they will because it only takes only 3% of the dietary fat to be stored, um, 3% of the calories in the dietary fat to be stored in body fat. And this is all in Dr. McDougall's Maximum Weight Loss book, All the Science, if you really want to understand it. Anytime a food tastes better, becomes more hyperpalatable, whether it's through the use of chemicals that we add to the food, like sugar, oil, flour, salt, the propensity for us to overeat on it becomes greater. And so in Ultimate Weight Loss, it's SOS, it's what we're saying, it's, it's SOFAS free, S-O-F-A-S, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt. It's SOFAS free, like SOFA. We're, we're having a 30-day challenge now, get off the SOFA. People think it's an exercise challenge. No, it stands for sugar, oil, flour, and alcohol. And so when you cook things in an air fryer, they become more tasty because you're removing water. And when you remove the water, you raise the caloric density. Now, take something like a mushroom. I've never really been a mushroom fan. I mean, I, I don't hate them, but I never really seek them out. But in the air fryer, they taste amazing. So will the world come to an end if these pound of mushrooms that were 100 calories raw are now 200? No, because now I'm going to like them better. I'm going to eat them more. So I don't recommend that you get an air fryer necessarily. It's just a great tool for people that hate vegetables because it makes the vegetables taste better. I mean, I'm at the point where I could just eat steamed zucchini, and I do every day, about two pounds. But if you're not there yet, using these tips and tricks, like using an air fryer to make the balsamic Dijon glaze Brussels sprouts, not mussel sprouts, would be very beneficial. And so, where was I? Go back to before you asked me about the air fryer. You're talking about overeating. not overeating on vegetables. Right, right. So, so here's the thing. So sequence the meal, because here's the thing. Everybody loves oatmeal and fruit. I mean, not everybody, but people that like oatmeal and fruit love it. Most people think it's a healthy breakfast. And compared to an Egg McMuffin, it really is a healthy breakfast. But it can also be a calorically dense breakfast because a lot of people eat the oats raw instead of cooking it because the grains absorb water, which lowers the caloric density. So a lot of people are doing like more of this muesli thing, which makes it easier to overeat on. A lot of people are putting, you know, flax seeds and chia seeds and walnuts in there and dried fruit. And so you can have something that really is more like, you know, Kenny's going like this because that's what he does. You have something that's more like dessert or cake than a whole grain than if you were just to eat like whole oat groats. And so I'm not telling people not to eat oatmeal or fruit, but if you eat oatmeal and fruit for breakfast, you're going to eat a certain amount. And maybe you'll even eat more because it tastes so darn good, especially if you aren't eating bread or flour or sugar. Now you've got the bread is the oatmeal. The cooked oatmeal has a very bready kind of mouthfeel and texture. And then you've got your really sweet fruit like your banana or blueberries. And now that's the sugar. So you're, you know, this has now become your cake. But if you start with vegetables, you will fill some of the tank space in the tank. So your stomach is like a tank. Think about it. It's about the size of a cantaloupe. It holds about a liter of food, which is about 4.22 cups. And if you fill it all the way or part of the way with a food of a lower caloric density, like vegetables, like salad, you're going to start to activate the mechanisms of satiation. You're going to start to activate the stretch receptors. Those are the things that are activated so you know you're starting to feel full. And you start to activate the nutrient receptors because you're eating foods with nutrients. And so then by the time you get to the oatmeal or whatever your second breakfast is, you're not starving and you're, you, you, you have some space left in the tank. And so I do that with all my meals. Sorry if I'm 
breathing a little funny just I have a like a chest wall injury I've had it for a couple weeks and so I just don't want you to think I'm like dying here or anything like that so I'm not and so I do that with all my meals you know one of the things we teach people is that if they're gonna eat something unhealthy because you can't tell people what to do in general I found I had somebody living here last week trying to get inside the mind of a food addict and figure out how to help people in general when they have experienced a relapse you, you can suggest things but you can't really force people to do things but one of the things I suggested to my client is that when she can't do the ultimate weight loss diet which for her right now is setting the bar too high instead of going to the F diet and just binging and eating a lot of vegan junk food why not do some of the recipes in my book on process that maybe have nuts and dates and chocolate that are richer but that they're still unprocessed and so did I miss something about the F diet the F diet what do you no, mean? like just a shitty diet okay. oh F yeah like meaning like that, that if we if we consider the ultimate weight loss diet like an A or an A plus diet oh, okay. the standard American diet would be an F or the junk food vegan diet would be an F maybe if you can't get an, an A right away just try to upgrade uh, to, to a C a or something like that is what you're saying. right and so so what I said to her and what I say to other people is that if you're going to eat something unhealthy if you're gonna go off plan and there's nothing I can do to stop you at least make a deal with yourself or if you're working with me we make a, a deal that you're always gonna eat something healthy first and that's the same idea as sequencing the meals because what if you're gonna eat junk food anything healthy you would eat first like a sweet potato is going to be of lower caloric density and higher nutritional value than going off plan. So I take that same principle and use it to everything I eat. So I don't eat anything good, and by good to me it's the starch, my favorite category from which about 80% of my calories come, before I eat something like vegetables first. And so the other thing, Jenny, is I don't eat until I'm hungry. Like today, I was just I was interacting with my group. That's what that's the thing about the Ultimate Weight Loss Program that. Is so beneficial beneficial that's I don't know that's a combination of beneficial and valuable for the people that join is the live interaction that we get with myself and my partner John Pierre so I'm on the boards all day answering questions we're almost live and in Hollywood but we're in Sherman Oaks. yep <laughs> and um, I didn't get hungry until 2 15 and I mean I was up at 5 30 I walked Bailey for an hour but that's when I got hungry so that's when I eat and the good thing about eating calorie dilute foods first is you know if you're really eating for hunger you know when you're hungry anything will taste good anything will satisfy the hunger even steamed zucchini which is what I had two pounds yellow and green but if you have to have oatmeal if you have to have something specific that's not hunger that's appetite and when food's not the problem when hunger's not the problem food is not the solution and the thing is is once you eat food of a higher caloric density you are never gonna go back and eat the food of a lower caloric density so once you eat that oatmeal and fruit you're never gonna go back and eat your pound of vegetables. It's not gonna happen. If you go and have a hot fudge sundae, you think you're gonna eat steamed kale? And to those of us that don't eat to the right of the red line, oatmeal and fruit is our hot fudge sundae. So I follow the principles of a caloric density. I always eat the calorically dilute foods first. It doesn't mean that I don't ever mix my starch and vegetables at night, I always do, but I've already had a pound, another pound of vegetables. So in my case, that would be my fourth pound of vegetables. Between lunch and dinner, it's usually some raw jicama sticks that I make into chili lime fries. They're not air fried, they're raw, but they're still, they look like fries, or I'll have a pound of purple carrots. And then I will eat my starch and vegetables combined. So last night I had my huge salad, which I show you how to make on the webinar of Seven Secrets to Superior Salad Satisfaction with wild rice and my new barefoot salad dressing or we'll often have something like smoky butternut bisque with wild rice so I do eat my starch with my vegetables but only after I've already eaten enough vegetables and I do that at every single meal so sequencing is important in terms of feeling full on fewer calories and getting full faster on the highest nutrient food because remember the more calorically concentrated the calories you eat the more dopamine is released and so when you say you like something better it's really because it's producing more dopamine in the brain but when you stop eating those high pal high fat high calorie hyper palatable foods you really can get high eating just you know Japanese sweet potatoes so I hope I explain that question wow, to uh, your satisfaction we got lots of questions here and I have a question yeah. Karen Davis is she from Studio City please answer is she from Studio City yeah or is, is she from Studio City or is I from Studio, is she from Studio City? City why would you ask that because something I'm working on. Okay, well, episode. anyway, listen, guys, if you like these episodes, please share, share, you know, I mean, I appreciate the hearts and the smiles, but 
sharing is caring so you can share it right now you can share the other previous 31 episodes these are archived on the page you're watching right now under the video section and within 24 hours they already go to YouTube and there's 31 episodes so please share thanks any questions live? Tony's asking more questions of Goldhammer and why he eats nuts. Why don't you eat nuts? Oh, well, here's the thing. I, I'm not sure Goldhammer eats nuts every day. And and by the way, you bring up a good point, it's Tony. When he eats nuts, he eats no more than one weighed and measure ounce a day. It, it, that's assuming he eats them every day, which when I talked to him last, he doesn't. And he takes them and he measures them out and he weighs them and puts them in little Ziploc bags and he keeps them in his freezer and he said to himself he made a pack years ago because cashew is his favorite nut he said if there is ever a day that I eat one more than one of these bags I will never allow myself to have nuts again in the house and if the person with the most restraint and willpower and the most diligent person I know in the world has to moderate his use of nuts like that. What hope is that for the rest of us? If you don't, if you want to know why I don't eat nuts, then please go to vegsource.com. We've done like three blog posts about it. They're high fat, they're high calorie. They are what they did not make me fat, but they kept me fat because I could not lose any weight even when I decreased them to one ounce a day. People vary greatly in the amount of fat they can eat and be fat. And there are people that can eat 30 and 40% of their calories and from fat, like my husband Charles and be lean. And there's people like uh, Jack Spratt, like myself, who can eat no fat. And my husband, his wife, can eat, could eat no lean. You know, you are not going to become deficient in fatty acids for 21 days not adding any fat to your diet. It's not going to happen, especially if you have fat on your body and there is a blood test. If you're really worried, you could have a tablespoon or actually even a teaspoon of flax seeds or chia seeds every day on your salad. If you're really worried, nobody has to eat nuts. It's, it's one of the highest allergen foods in the world. I mean, I, I just can't believe that God or whoever you believe made the food would take a food that is one of the greatest allergens and make it that, that so many people are allergic if it's something we had to have. Our ancestors ate nuts seasonally, each one. I say eat all the nuts you want if you get them in nature. And when, in nature, by the way, they're not in that brown shell, the walnut. They're in another shell. So our ancestors ate nuts seasonally and they did not eat them every day. So, you know, I, I mean, the people have gone nuts for nuts, you know, and the thing is, is you eat nuts, you got big butts. You stop eating so much fat, you don't wear so much fat. The sensitive doctor. people, be careful with that. Now, I'm not okay. calling you fat. I'm not calling any of you fat. And I, uh, I eat nuts and my and, butt's not big. And see, here's the thing, guys. See, fat, I know it's a word. It's a very charged word, but, but there's a big difference. See, I don't like the word overweight, actually, because it's not accurate. I was a speech major, and when I go to the airport every week to, do a, uh, to travel, they weigh my suitcase, and it can't weigh more than 50 pounds. And if it weighs 50.5, they say that my bag is overweight. We're not overweight. We're, we're, it's the fat. We don't, we don't want to lose weight from our limbs or from our muscles or from our bones. It's the fat. So again, it's like the, the analogy I gave about the guy that called the lady the pig when she wasn't a pig. There was a pig in the road. For me, it's not a charged word, but I understand for people it is. But Dr. McDougall's been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. If you stop, if you want to not wear fat, don't eat fat. So a big question, I think you might have answered earlier or said something about it, but Sandra brings the question, when is your Secrets to the Ultimate Weight Loss book coming out? So, like I, I said, we, we are editing it right now, and we've done the first pass, meaning that, that, that I, I'm working this, this time. Do we have a tentative date? I'm praying by August 19th, when I am going to be speaking at the Plant-Based Summit in Denver, Colorado, because the next day, August 20th, I'm speaking at Gel Healthy Sacramento. The book was written a year ago, but my husband was going to edit it, and then he never got around to it. So we finally are working with an editor, or I should say a co-writer, Glenn Merzer, who helped me with my last book. But this time, instead of doing it uh, you know, through computer, he, he comes and meets with me according to his schedule. We've done one pass. We're doing the second pass right now. And then it's got to go to what's called a copy editor. Leave me, and we don't know what the title is yet. The, t the working title is Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, but we're looking for that great title, like The Skinny Bitch, you know, one of those titles. And if you have a great one, send it to me. And if I use it, I'll give you a free book. All right. I think we got it. I think we should end it early. Well, no, actually, we've got it. I have, I have a very important question from, oh, where did I put that piece of paper, you guys? Oh, yes, it fell to the ground where Bailey is. Thank you. So, so you have one question from Luz that feeds yeah. into this question. I'm sorry, this is super important. That's why I saved it for last. Mm -hmm. So what did Luz say? Because this feeds into it. Um, Luz asked... 
She said she saw your talk from fat vegan to skinny bitch and wonders why you think you were successful this time around. Right. And Luz, I'm going to answer that in conjunction with this question because it, the answer to that is one word and it comes up a lot in this question. And it's not a question, it's long. And generally, you know, I say keep it short, but in this case, I'm reading it as is because I think this is really important and I, I honor the person that wrote it because I know it was difficult to write. I'm not using your name, so I'm just going to read it. So she, it's a female, says, I don't know the email address to write for questions on your weekly YouTube, weekly episode show. I love the show. Thank you. And you go to eatunprocessed.com. If you're in Ultimate Weight Loss, you can either email me or email Charles or put it on our boards. But that's where you go to submit a question for all of you watching. She says, please don't use my name, which I'm not. If you use my question, and feel free to just email me and not use my question at all as the chances of it having meaning for others is not high. Well, there you're wrong, because this will be a very important topic that we're going to discuss, and it will have great meaning for others, so I thank you for writing it, especially because I see how difficult your situation is, and that's why, in case I cry, I wanted to wait till the end. She says she became vegan in June 2016 when her cardiologist told her it was the only way for her to get her blood pressure down because she's allergic to all blood pressure lowering medicine and he had you had you read Forks Over Knives. So I would love to know who your cardiologist is so that I can refer him to everyone and thank him. And so in a way, it's a blessing that you are allergic to these medicines because think about it, guys. If these medications were never invented, people would have to do the right thing or die. She says she joined UWL in February 2017. Her husband of 28 years loved me and wanted me to live rather than die of a heart attack. So he bought very little non-vegan food into the house. My husband had become almost a vegan when he died of a massive heart attack. No warning or history of health problems on March 18th, 2017. First of all, I am very, very sorry for your loss. When you say he had no warning or history of health problems, this is very, very important for everybody, whether they're overweight or not, to understand that the reason they call heart disease the silent killer is in something like over 50% of the cases, the first symptom of cardiovascular disease is death. If you look at people like James Gandolfini, who played Tony Soprano, he died of a massive heart attack in front of his son after eating some very, very rich food. Now, I don't know if he had a history of heart disease. What about Tim Russert, the newscaster, who was given a clean bill of health from a, a, a treadmill test and then dropped dead? So please understand that even if you're not overweight and even if you don't suffer from food addiction, if you eat the standard American diet, you already have heart disease. Dr. Esselstyn talks about this in all of his lectures that anyone over the age of 10 that has been eating animal products and oil already has heart disease. So just because you're asymptomatic doesn't mean anything. And again, I'm not trying to diminish your loss, I, but I think this is important for people to know because I'm very, very sorry and that has to be devastating. I, I can't imagine what it's like to lose a spouse. I am brokenhearted but have not gone non-vegan. I am eating some sugar for comfort, I will admit. So good for you for staying vegan. And it's completely normal to want to comfort yourself with food in a situation like this. Now I'm faced with living alone, which I have no desire to do, or move in with my sister who honestly believes that milk makes your bones strong. She is going to the Las Vegas Ultimate Weight Loss Live conference with me in September, just because I'm paying and it's a vacation for her. There was no way to keep her from eating or having non-compliant food in her own house. I have to learn to get along without going along. Okay, so great that your sister's going, and I hope she'll really attend the lectures, and especially if Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer not use this just as a vacation, because there is the hope that when she hears them talk, she may realize otherwise. Now, when you talk about getting along without going along, that's the name of a very a wonderful and well-known lecture by Dr. Doug Lyle that you can find for free on his website, esteemdynamic.org. And it's a great lecture. Depending on a person's personality, it's the best way to deal with what I call the others. But if you're a food addict, you got to take that into consideration. Because if you go along as a food addict, then you're not getting along, you're getting fat and sick. 
it doesn't work for people with addictions to just go with the flow for this. I mean, this lecture, Getting Along Without Going Along, is how to answer people's questions and what to do in certain situations. But for people with food addiction, it's not going to work. She says, basically, I'm back to using willpower instead of environmental control. Now, to answer Luz's question, why was I successful after 51 years of failure? Twice I was thin. And please, if you haven't seen my talk from Fat Vegan to Skinny Bitch on Dr. McDougall's website or YouTube, please watch it because I'm unrelatable now to some people because they think of me just as the skinny bitch. I was a bitch before, just so you know. I wasn't always skinny. The other two times that I lost weight to weigh this, I wasn't successful. It was fleeting. But the reason I'm successful now is because I have learned to master my environment. You say you're back to using willpower. Well, that's really, really hard, especially if you're in this state of grief. I mean, it's hard when everything is going right because willpower is a very, very limited resource. And when your environment is not pristine, when it is not sanitized, you have to use every ounce of willpower you have, not only to not eat what's there, but to not even, to just not to think about it when it's there. See, willpower is only required when you have to make a decision and you'd never have to decide to eat something that's not there. That is why I've been saying, I've been saying it a long time, but I've been saying it on record, at least on things that have been recorded for three years. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth, and it's not a question of if you will eat it, only when. And you can't regret, nobody's ever regretted not eating something. And so willpower is not going to work, and the only thing that really does work, see, see we can't control very much in life. You couldn't control that your husband died suddenly of heart disease. But the one thing we can control is our environment. Now, there's a couple of cases where you can't or where it's difficult. We got a girl, Paula, in UWL that's in the military in Afghanistan, and she can't really control her environment as to what they serve her. I mean, it's not the ideal situation for being a vegan in general, but to be a healthy vegan. And she's down to a size eight, she's rocking it, she's doing it, it's hard. And I once had a client that was in prison and that was another situation, which it's not, it's not what you think, but the point is, is there's certain situations that are really hard where you really don't have a say in your environment. But you live alone, which I know you don't wanna do because it's lonely and we'll talk about that. See, I would rather be healthy but alone than fat and sick just to be with somebody else. But if you are living alone, you have to control your environment if you want to be successful. And that's why I'm successful now, because it's not negotiable. I mean, there's no crap in my house. People do not bring crap in here. They know there's no alcohol, flour, sugar, oil, salt. When I was first losing weight and realized that nuts, Tony said, well, what's wrong with nuts? There's nothing wrong with nuts. If you can eat them, they're healthy. But for people like me that are food addicts, they're a trigger food. They're so high fat, high palatable, so pleasurable that they perpetuate overeating and not just on nuts. I said to my husband, and this was over five years ago, that we couldn't have them in the house, that we couldn't have chips. Now we weren't eating like chips like, like Fritos, we were eating like the baked ones, that you know, they had no salt, no oil. And he said, oh, it's okay, I'll hide them. Well, I live in a 1,100 square foot apartment. You think that I'm not gonna find them, right? And we do recommend to some of our people that absolutely, whose families are, are just not going to be supportive. And by the way, a loving family will always support someone in recovery. I'm, I'm laughing because I made potato salad and we hear uh, Kenny eating it over there. Um, you know, there are locked food safes. And that could be a thing you could negotiate with your sister if you end up moving in with her. You know, but maybe there's some other options and maybe we can talk, you know. I'd be happy to talk to you and I will, I will answer your email as well. So um, to be patient with your sister, you know, she may never change even if she goes to the conference because she's probably addicted to these foods too. Uh, she says, I'm not sure what my question is, and it doesn't matter because it's a great email, so it doesn't matter that there's not a question because I will find questions in there. She says, maybe my question is about grieving and sugar and how long it should take or should I allow myself to eat some sugar for comfort? Well, again, how long it takes for grief is a very individual thing. And I think to, to grieve well is to live well. And I am a horrible griever. If you read my book on process, I've never lost a spouse, but I lost a baby daughter, Rachel, in 2000. And that same year, my beloved dog, Scooby, died, and my mom, and my dad. 
and I, I short circuited. I hit rock bottom. I developed panic disorder. I lost my house and my job, and I, I couldn't leave my house for a year. And I did turn to food, and specifically to sugar, and that's what I did. And all that happened is it didn't bring any of these people back. All it did was make me that much closer to joining them in heaven. And it's hard, I know. And I remember um, in 2000, February 2000, after I, I lost my, ba my baby and my dad like w within like a month of each other. And I was actually at a cooking school where I was teaching a in Santa Monica when the, the call came in from the nurse from ICU and I was stunned. And I remember snapping at the chef that was teaching that day because the dessert on the menu, the vegan dessert, was something called Canton, was like jello. And I wanted like a real dessert, like coconut cake or something. And he said to me, and I, you know, I, I dismissed him, 17, I wish I could find him now, I don't even remember his name. And he said, you know, the reason you eat so much sugar is to compensate for all the sorrow in your life. And back then I said, you're full of shit. And now I realize he was right. There's no amount of sugar you can eat or food that any of you could eat or alcohol you could drink that's going to make anything any better. It's just going to make it worse. It's not going to bring your loved ones back. It's not going to make you have less stress. It's only going to have you have more stress because what happens is when you eat the sugar, especially if you're somebody that's lost weight, now you're going to gain it back. You're going to get sucked back in the pleasure trap. You're going to, you're going to not feel good about yourself. And so in addition to having the problem of grieving for your husband, now you've got to deal with the fat and the sick that is a result of eating these things. So. You know, I could say to you, well, how long should I allow you to, how long would I allow you to eat sugar? That would be like somebody that's an alcoholic saying, you know, my, my spouse just died and it's really hard, so how many months can I go back to drinking? Well, the answer is you can't. And sugar is the same thing. If you start looking at sugar and flour, the way you look at cocaine and alcohol, sugar and flour is just powdered alcohol. It's a drug. It's not a food. So my recommendation is that you find other ways to comfort yourself. And you did say that you're trying to find a counselor, but the one your doctor referred you to is on vacation for two weeks. Well, here's the thing. The, the, for mental health emergencies or crises, you can always find somebody sooner, as soon as today. You can go to esteemdynamics.org and sign up for a 30-minute consult with Dr. Doug Lyle for $75. And he can, when I say help you, I mean, it's not, you still have to go through the grieving process, which totally sucks and can take a really long time. But again, if hunger's not the problem, food's not the solution. You have a broken heart, you're grieving, and honor your husband by not joining him so soon and showing him that you can do this and, and be an example. I don't know if you have children or grandchildren, and I get it's scary and hard to be alone, but the food's not gonna help. So if there's nothing else on that note, I, again, my condolences to you and Thank you for writing and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Weight Loss Wednesday. Please feel share. This is episode 32. I'm Chef AJ and I truly believe you can have both the health and the body that you so richly deserve. Thanks everyone.